Are you unsure what kind of power head to get for your saltwater aquarium? I promise that by the end of this video, you'll know exactly what kind of pump you want to get for your aquarium. Hi, I'm Richard from The Beginner's Reef and I'm here to help you succeed with your saltwater aquarium by providing you with great information, awesome resources and really helpful information. If you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button and anything I mention in this video, you can find in the video notes below. Make sure you stick around throughout this video because I've got loads of great information and some good tips that I hope you'll really find helpful. Now this video is kind of the culmination and comparison of all the power heads in our power head selection series. So if you've not watched any of those videos yet, make sure you go and check out those videos first in the playlist and then come back to this comparison video so you can get a good idea of which one is going to be the best option for your aquarium. So with so many power heads available, how do we pick the right one for our aquarium. There's so many types, so many different sizes, and they can be expensive. So how do we pick one? Um, the way that this kind of, this entire video series came around was that I've been cleaning my power heads as I do kind of every month, two months, and I just thought, damn, what if I needed a new one? Um, for me, I've been doing this long enough, I kind of know all the different types, but I remember coming into this hobby the amount of information we had on all the types of equipment was just mind-blowing. So I wanted to create this video series to kind of guide you through all the different types and then this video is, is going to kind of compare all of them. So I hope that you'll find the information in this helpful and towards the end of the video we're going to do a bit of a selection exercise. So we'll walk through how we find the different kind of pumps for a specific budget so that you can go and apply that technique to your aquarium so that you can get the right pump for your tank. So why are power heads needed in saltwater aquariums? There's basically three reasons why we need them in a saltwater aquarium. If you've come over from freshwater, you generally just have power heads just to move water around. But for us, there's kind of three, there's three reasons. One is we want to keep the detritus, waste, and uneaten food suspended in the water so it can be moved to our filtration to be removed. Because if detritus and waste is allowed to settle into the live rock or on the sand bed, so it's gonna break down and release all kinds of junk into the water, phosphates, nitrates, ammonia, you name it, and we don't want that. So we want the detritus out and the only way we can do that is by having good random flow to keep that muck suspended in the water. The second reason is surface agitation. So we need to keep the water on the top of the aquarium moving and what this does is it aids in gas exchange and what we want to do is we want to expel nitrogen and carbon dioxide from the water that have been created by the bacteria and the fish and the organisms living in the aquarium and we want to bring oxygen into the water for those livestock so that they can continue to live. And then the third reason is that corals, they need flow to bring any food to them and to remove their waste from them. If they are sitting in low flow, they're not going to be able to capture any additional food from the water and their waste is just gonna settle on their tissues and it's gonna cause them to burn and die. So a quick tip just right off the bat, start this video um, for your power heads is keep them clean. Keep them clean often. In my other videos I've talked about ways of keeping them clean but just a quick recap is just every month or two just remove them, put them in a bath of vinegar and warm water Run them for 10 minutes and that'll just sparkle them straight up. If you've got some hard coralline algae on there, you can run them through muriatic acid and warm water and that will really help to get the uh, coralline algae off. But keep your pumps clean and it keeps them running at their peak efficiency. So in our other videos, we were talking about sizing the power heads and 
it all comes down to two things, the size of your aquarium and the type of livestock. And I briefly touched in these on the other videos, but I just want to go into it in a little bit more detail in this video. So the size of your aquarium is obviously going to dictate the size and power head that you're going to go in there. But the flow rate is more down to the inhabitants within it or the inhabitants that you are going to be keeping in the future. So if you're going to have a fish only aquarium, you're only going to need about five to 10 times the system volume turnover to basically keep the detritus suspended in the water to be removed by your filtration, but also to give your fish a bit of flow to swim against to keep them healthy and keep their, their muscle definition. So five to 10 times your turnover for a fish only aquarium. If you're going to have a soft coral aquarium or aquarium with LPS coral, so mushrooms, zoas, GSP, um, torches, hammers, frog spawn, things like that, then you're going to be looking at anywhere from 10 to 20 times the volume turnover. And don't worry, we're going to talk a bit more about how we calculate the turnover in a moment. SPS corals, they are the most demanding for flow. Um, so we're going to be needing a turnover of at least 20 to 40, 50, 60 times your total system volume. Um, to help your SPS thrive. And this may be for future, if you're a beginner, I don't recommend you going straight out and try an SPS, but if you're gonna be spending 200 bucks on a pump, buy one that's gonna last you for the next, you know, five, six, seven, 10 years of your aquarium. So if you're gonna be planning for SPS in the future, you wanna be looking at at least 20 times your turnover for your pump or pumps. So the way that we calculate the turnover is we want to take the system volume and then times it by the turnover rate required. So if we want say um, a 50 gallon aquarium and we want LPS so we're going to be looking at about a 20 times turnover we basically do your 50 gallons times by 20 it's going to come out at a thousand gallons per hour so you either want one pump or a couple of pumps that are going to produce at least a thousand gallons per hour. Um, if you've got something like a 75 gallon tank and you're going to be wanting SPS in the future and let's say you wanted 40 times turnover so you do 75 times 40 it's going to give you 3,000 gallons per hour turnover. I prefer to split the turnover across multiple power heads and then it gives you more places to put the random flow generators. So that's kind of how we start sizing the pump. So the type of livestock is kind of your first port of call to work out the gallons per hour you're going to require. So now we've figured out what kind of livestock we're going in there and we kind of have a ballpark of what turnover we need. We've now got to look at the shape of the aquarium. Are we going to be having a long rectangular aquarium? Are we going to be having a small nano tank? Are we going to be having a cube aquarium? or are we gonna be having a peninsula aquarium so you don't want pumps on your three viewing panels? Uh, are you gonna be having one of these drop-off aquariums? Uh, the shape of the aquarium is kinda of gonna dictate what kind of pump style that you have. Now, the main thing with the flow in the aquarium is we wanna get rid of all those dead spots. So for things like long aquariums, gyros work really good, and your variable flow pump's really good. Um, if you're having a nano aquarium, just one little small variable flow pump will, works awesome. If you've got a small tank, say around about you know, 40, 50 gallons and you're on a budget, the little multifunction maxi jet style of pumps with a rotating nozzle on it might be a good starter point for you. So we just gotta kind of look at the aquarium shape and where we can put power heads to move water. Cube aquariums work really good um, if you can put power heads on the back wall because then you can have the water moving from front to back. Same kind of with the, the drop off aquariums. If you've got the peninsula style aquariums, you can mount two gyros vertically on the back wall and fire one down one side, if you escape one down the other and have them alternating that way. So look at the pump, do a bit of research on, on what kind of pump works best for your style of aquarium and then that's going to dictate the the style of pump. So you now kind of looked at the livestock, the shape of your aquarium 
and you're now starting to kind of hone in on what style of pump. And again, be sure to check out our other videos in the series because this will really help you figure out exactly which pump might be better for your aquarium. So after you've got your aquarium shape sorted out, now you also have to think about the kind of aquascape you've got in there. Are you gonna have a minimalist style of aquascape where you want lots of swimming room because you want some tangs or things like that or you want a lot of fish at, on top of the, um, the coral? Or are you gonna have one of these cool tanks where they do like a floating rock so it just looks like the rock's coming out from the wall um, so you've got flow kind of all around it or are you planning to have just a rock wall where all your rock is stacked in one big wall against the back wall of the aquarium which will make it difficult uh, for getting flow down the back so things like that are, are something that you have to think about the other thing that you have to think about is your future coral growth so as you've got your aquascape now as your corals grow especially if you go into sps as they grow they're going to take up more of that water space and they're going to impede the water flow so the aquascape and the coral growth is kind of your next step in what you have to think about when looking at the type of pump you wish to purchase so we get asked quite often why not just use your return pump you've got a pump that's pumping water back into your aquarium is that not enough and the answer is no your return pump is a completely different system in your aquarium the return pump is basically there to move the water through your filtration so either if you have an all-in-one aquarium is to move it through the filter at the back or if you have a sumped aquarium is to move the water from your sump back up to your aquarium now your return pump should be kind of matched in terms of its flow rate to your protein skimmer so that the two can work kind of as a team so that your flow rate through your filtration is slow because the slow flow rate through your filter allows for increased contact time between the water and the filtration media if your water is just screaming through your sump it's going to be far too quick to have a good contact time and therefore your filter is not going to be working very efficient so a lower flow is required through your filtration but when we looked at turnover earlier we need a high flow for the three factors for detritus for surface agitation and for corals um, and a return pump isn't going to provide that so return pump forget about it it's a completely different part of your aquarium system and it shouldn't be relied on for providing flow in your aquarium so we're just gonna have a quick kind of like recap on the types of power heads so we've got the multifunction pumps which are kind of like your maxi jet style pumps they're a fixed flow you plug them in they just run at the set gallon per hour and they generally have a kind of narrow pencil style stream of water you can kind of get them a little bit of a wider stream by putting the power head um, adapter on the front of them but generally they're a fixed flow narrow stream pump then you have the fixed flow power heads um, they are a wider stream but same thing you just plug them into the wall and they just run you can connect them to a simple on off controller like the uh, jbj ocean wave controller but generally they are pump that you would put at the kind of at the back of your rock work just to get water moving um, so that you don't have to spend as much on the more expensive pumps then you have the variable flow pumps which are the staple of saltwater aquarium where they are the ones that are going to give you the pulsing modes the ramp up the ramp down um, to provide random chaotic flow in your aquarium next we have the gyro pumps that are the laminar flow style pumps and these are just designed to move water in sheets rather than kind of from a hose and they were really good for moving large volumes of water long distances so your long tanks peninsula style aquariums drop off aquariums are be suited for gyro style pumps and then the last one is your wave boxes they're kind of a bit of a an older technology and they're starting to die out a little bit but wave boxes generally are there to provide a wave pulsing motion in the aquarium and they work good 
but with the newer variable flow pumps, like I said, I think they're on their way out. So now we're just going to have a quick look over this comparison table. Um, it's got all the pumps listed side by side. You've got your multifunctions, your fixed flows, your variable flows, your gyros, your wave boxes, all the different kinds of um, price ranges, gallons per hour, recommended tank size. I'm not going to go through everything here because otherwise it would just it'd bore you to death and we'd be here all day. Um, so if you want to just have a quick glance, just pause the video and take a good once over it. Um, it gives a nice comparison of kind of what can be done with each style of pump and again it'll help you to start to hone in on the kind of pump that is going to be perfect for your aquarium. So by now you should have an idea of what kind of pump style you are going to be having whether it's going to be a combination of say a, a fixed flow pump and a variable flow pump or if you're going to have a two fixed flows or a gyro and a variable flow you know you can have some kind of idea and the next question that i guess asked a lot is well where do we mount them how do we mount them and every aquarium is different they all are going to need some fine tuning as to where you're going to mount your power heads but there's kind of some general starting points that i want to go over so for a rectangular aquarium, most people will get two pumps and they'll mount one on one end of the aquarium and one on the other end of the aquarium. Uh, one maybe is kind of down the back of the rock work and one might be in the front of the aquarium. And basically just to get them firing against each other, helping to create that random flow and trying to prevent any dead spots in the aquarium. Um, for cube style of aquariums, most aquarists will put two power heads or a gyra on the back panel, kind of moving water down the front glass and then back up to the overflow. And again, having them on alternating patterns will help to provide random flow. Um, another option is to put one on the back wall and one on the side wall, and it then starts to create a bit of a rotational moment of flow throughout the aquarium. Uh, peninsula style aquariums and long aquariums um, seem to be dominated by the larger style of Ecotech Vortec pumps like your MP40s, MP60s and now with the advent of the gyros, um, the gyros are just kind of taking over. This is hopefully going to be my next aquarium, it's going to be a peninsula if I can talk my wife into it and what I will be doing is mounting two gyros vertically on the back wall and having one fire down one side of the aquascape one fire down the other side of the aquascape because i hate to see equipment in a beautiful coral reef aquarium so if i can get them hidden on the back wall firing down that's going to be the ultimate option um, so long aquariums peninsula aquariums gyros wave boxes the large variable power heads are going to be perfect for that kind of thing and the reasons why we want to get them kind of mounted in the right place is you want to provide several things. We've got the three things earlier on for the detritus removal, the agitation and the bringing food to the coal and removing its waste. But we want to make sure that we can mount the power heads kind of starting off at those points and then just tweaking them around because you may find that if you've got a power head too low, it's blowing the sand bed around and it's pushing all the sand to one end or it's the the rock work is creating a bit of an eddy at the back of it and it's basically pulling up your sand into the um, the main flow path and then blowing it across your aquarium so you kind of have to tweak them a little bit point them up point them down a bit um, but you just want to prevent that sandstorm from the flow from your pumps um, the other option is what you can do is buy a more powerful pump that sits higher up in the aquarium and a lower flow pump that sits lower so that you can have the higher flow in the top part of your tank and then a lower flow towards the sand bed. Um, that will then help you place your corals because corals like different amounts of light, they like different amounts of flow and trying to find that, that sweet spot for each kind of coral can be difficult. Um, but by using variable flow pumps, you can turn the flow rates up and down to suit. Um, so just use these options as a starting point and then you can kind of tweak to find which is going to work best in your shape aquarium and with the aquascape that you have.
So that's kind of a bit of a recap of how we're going to size these pumps. We're going to look at the turnover required for your livestock, the shape of your aquarium, whether it's a cube, peninsula, long, drop off, you name it, um, your aquascape and future coral growth. And then the next one really is your budget. Budget is always a tough one in this hobby because it's not a cheap hobby. You can make a saltwater aquarium on the cheaper end of the scale, but trying to cheap out on equipment is very different. And budget is, is always kind of at the forefront of the majority of reefers' minds. So you want to make sure that we, you know, we kind of follow this process so that we get the right pump for the right price and we pay for it once so that it's going to last us. So, but because we've got all the different kind of pump styles, we have all the different budgets associated with it. Um, so if budget's not an option, you can look at the high end variable flow pumps and gyros, or if budget's an option, you can look at maybe a fixed flow pump and a smaller variable flow pump, or even two fixed flow pumps on a wave controller like the JBJ. Then we're gonna be looking at controllability. Do we care if they work as part of a group? Do we want them to be creating random flow patterns through waveforms or speeds? If you want that kind of controllability, you're gonna pay a little bit more for it. So as I mentioned right at the start of the video, we're gonna kind of go through a bit of an example exercise now, just so you can kind of see how we are gonna pick uh, a pump based on the things that we've spoken about in this video. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this uh, beautiful 65 gallon rimless aquarium from JBJ. Um, we're gonna have a budget to spend on the pumps of say $200. I'm gonna want corals in the future. I definitely want controllable power heads because I want some kind of flexibility and a little bit of control. Uh, and I want to be able to expand and add to those in the future. Um, you know, if I get SPS and they start expanding and I want to increase my flow, I want to be able to just buy another pump and just plug it straight in. Um, and we're going to look at around starting at about 20 times the turnover for this 65 gallon aquarium because I'm going to want to start with say mushrooms and zoas and frog sport and things like that further down the line. Um, so the 20 times turnover is going to give us a flow rate of about 1300 gallons per hour turning over in the aquarium every hour. So um, multiple pumps uh, is always what I recommend for any aquarium. So option one we are going to look at is the Hydor Corellia Smart Wave Pump Kit and it comes with two third generation Corellia fixed flow power heads and each one of these is about 1350 gallons per hour. Now you may say well you said you wanted variable flow, I said but no I wanted some kind of controllability and because these pumps are part of a controller they are going to be switching on and off using the controller. Um, so it gives me a little bit of um, a little bit of control, but I get two power heads and a controller for under 200 bucks, which I can't get variable flows for under 200 bucks for this size aquarium. So option one is kind of a, a nice good starting point. Option two is the Ice Cap Gyra 2K pump with a dual Wi-Fi controller. And this is an awesome, awesome pump. It's gonna give me up to 2,000 gallons per hour, which exceeds the turnover that I need, but it's just over my budget, 210 bucks. So that's something I may have to think about. And it's only one pump, but because it's a gyro, it's gonna move vast amounts of water and it's variable, so I can control what the pump does, but it is a little bit over my budget. The other reason I do like this though is that the controller allows me to just purchase another power head later on and plug that in. So if my tank starts to get full, I can just buy another pump head, uh, I think about 100 bucks for these ones, and I can plug it straight into the controller. Or if I decide in the future I want to upgrade my aquarium to something bigger, I've already got two gyros that are going to be a really good starting point in a bigger aquarium. So that's option two. Option three 
is the Current USA E-Flux Wave Complete Pump Kit. And you may look at this and think, well, that's not a very powerful pump at 650 gallons per hour. But the pump is a variable flow pump and it comes with a controller. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna purchase an additional power head that's 1,050 gallons per hour for about 84 bucks. So the, the additional pump, the controller, and the pump that comes with it is gonna be around about 202 bucks. But this one gives me two pumps that I can run together that's gonna to give me more than my turnover required. And the other thing that I like about them is it's the controller can accept another pump connection. So I can connect three pumps to this controller. So further down the line, if I want to add an additional power head, I can go and purchase one and plug it straight into the controller. And then I can control three pumps from this one control unit. The smaller pump, I would probably kind of put it lower down in my aquarium. And then the higher rated flow rate pump, I would stick in the upper half of my tank so that I then got a bit of flexibility of the flow rates in the aquarium and I've got the additional availability to plug in another pump later down the line. So you're probably all wondering which one would I pick from the three options and it's quite a tough one. They're, they're all kind of good solid options but I think for me what I would pick would be option two would be the gyra and that's just because it gives me lots of flow, lots of options if I want to, I can add an additional power head for 100 bucks, and it gives me the option for expanding if I go into an, a bigger aquarium later on down the line. Um, I know it's a little bit over my budget, but I think the extra 10 bucks would be worth it for the, the control that it gives me, the additions that I can add on to it. I can link it up to an aquarium, control it easily in the future if I wish and it's got more than enough flow so that at the start of my aquarium journey, I can have the flow turn right down. And as my corals grow, you know, in a couple of years time, I can just keep cranking up that flow rate until everything is just being kept in perfect condition. So if you wanna kind of go through this kind of selection process yourself, uh, make sure you check the video notes below because I'm gonna have a link to uh, a downloadable kind of checklist guide that goes through all the things that you want to think about when you're kind of selecting your own power head so that by the time you get to the end of that checklist you know exactly which is the brand and model of power head that's going to be perfect for your aquarium. So another quick little tip that I've got for you is most of the pumps and power heads that you get nowadays they all have kind of a combination of a suction and magnetic mounting system and over the last few years, I've started to see a little bit on the forums where people have had sudden fish deaths and coral deaths in the aquarium and they can't figure out why. They've checked all the parameters and everything's looking good, but they're having fish and coral death. And what it's turning out to be is the coatings on some of the magnetic suction cups on the internal part of the pump sits inside the tank is that they're starting to break down and the, the, you know, the water's getting into the magnet part and it's starting to corrode and leach metals into the aquarium. So every time you're cleaning your glass and cleaning your power heads, just make sure you give your coatings um, an inspection. So basically just turn your pump off, pull it off, check the rubber around it, check the epoxy, whatever it's covered in, just to make sure it's good and stick it on. Because the last thing you want is a beautiful aquarium destroyed because of a material that has maybe started to break down. And it's rare, but it's happened enough where I always advise people to just keep on check of the, the coatings because it would be a terrible loss for something so stupid really. So just check those coatings and you'll be good to go. So if you watched the videos in this series and you know you're looking at the budgets and you're thinking geez some of these power hits are stupid expensive why not just go and get one of the cheaper ones off Amazon uh, from China and I've had that I've tried that I've had the cheaper pumps and they just don't last I had one that I paid 120 bucks for it lasted me eight months 
I had another one of the same brand that's really popular within the industry from China. It lasted me six months. That stopped for no reason. I don't know why. Um, and then in the end, I ended up going buying the more expensive, like Tunzi Turbels, which I should have done in the first place. You know, so sometimes it, it seems a bit better to buy the cheaper versions, but then when they break, you end up having to then buy another pump or a better pump anyway and then you've kind of wasted the hundred bucks you spent in the first place whereas if you just kind of save that little bit more for a little bit longer and get the good pedigree pumps um, in the long term it's a much better investment you may have heard it already but in this hobby try and get the best you can afford um, and if you can't afford it check the the classifieds check the used equipment there's always people selling stuff uh, people leaving the hobby and you can find some absolute gold in there. So just stay away from the, the cheaper Chinese versions. I mean, some people, it's it's a really controversial topic. Some people rave about them. Um, I know more people that have had problems and failures with things like pumps um, that they're just not worth it. So my advice to you is to just try and get the better equipment that costs just a little bit more, but it'll be worth it in the long run. So hopefully now by watching the uh, playlist video series before this and now this can kind of comparison video, you've got a pretty good idea of what power head you're going to be wanting. So get your web browser open and go over to the beginnersreef.com forward slash power heads and then you can see all the power heads. If you're still not seeing all the videos in the playlist, definitely make sure you click on the playlist video here. If you like this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one.